Hi, it's Dave. So, just a quick video again of how I'm getting on this week. I'm probably going to just produce uh, short five minute videos, maybe once a week, that keep you up to date. If you think you'd like longer videos, let me know, ping me a message. I can do longer ones uh, over time, but obviously, I do work full time, so I don't always get work time to work on the project. Uh, but I will like update you as much as I can, and hopefully, just a short five minute video each week I think is going to be pretty enough for, for how I get on. Um, so I'm just going to show you a little clip now of some 3D work I've been doing and, uh, and how the project's progressing. So I just want to show a close-up of the damage to this BMS. I've got a little close-up camera um, and you can see there a Zena diode pretty much in the middle of the picture that's um, kind of expanded and it's that that's caused a little scorch mark on the plastic. Um, so I need to get that replaced. All the other Zena diodes here all look fine on this group and uh, over on the group next to it. As all these do chain together, um, I would have expected probably problems on the on the adjacent ones as well, but nothing appears to be too badly damaged or damaged at all. Uh, if I come up here, there's a resistor there right in the middle. That's just a 10 ohm resistor. Um, and there's one on each group. The one over here, you can see is fine. This one is just the, the casings burnt off completely. And then over here, you can see again, this one's got some writing on it. Uh, back here it's got nothing at all so clearly that resistor has gone and I've actually now um, tested that with my multimeter and yep that little 10 ohm resistor is dead and so is this Zena diode all these other resistors and capacitors all look fine they all seem to test okay it is very difficult to test these things when they're in a circuit but um, you can get a really rough idea especially when they're in a mirror like this where you've got lots of Oh, that's a terrible picture. We've got lots of the same circuit. You can obviously just check one against another. Um, as long as they behave the same, then it's all good. And uh, this one, it's just these two two components that look like they've died. My only other worry is this chip here. You can see where the coating, the protective coating on it has melted. Now, there's no damage to the plastic. It hasn't got that hot that it's scorched the plastic, but clearly that has got very hot, whereas all these... The coating is all intact. If we come over here, coating is all intact here. Yeah, the coating has melted. I'm just hoping that has only just got hot, not really, really hot, and um, it's going to be okay. But because um, they're going to be bespoke chips. Thanks to um, a couple of people that have said they've actually got um, 30 kilowatt BMSs. Um, so I've got a couple of replacements I could use, but I really would like to get this fixed up. So I'm going to give it a go. These components are literally pennies each. And it'll probably cost me about 20 quid for the guys to resolder this for me. They're a bit fiddly for me to do my big chunky soldering iron, so I'll get them to do that. I've not really done much 3D work uh, before, but I wanted to create a couple of covers for the connectors on the leaf battery cells that I'm putting together. Obviously, the 12 that I've got that went in the back of the original battery pack are all covered already. But the connectors that I'm putting now with six, two stacks of six, the, um, there's nothing to cover the connectors up and it just scares the life out of me having it all exposed. So I've used Tinkercad, which I've not used before. Um, but it's dead simple. Just stick on some primitive objects. Um, you can create either solid or um, holes. And very quickly, I managed to produce uh, a big and a little connector. So I've got my little 3D printer here chugging them out. Um, and uh, I can now use these to uh, hide the connectors or really protect the connectors. So I don't electrocute myself every two seconds. Uh, or more importantly, the kids don't. And actually the cat that has a habit of going in there and sniffing around, <laughs> it's not going to hurt himself. So that's good. Tinkercad, dead simple. Exports to an STL file which I can put into the 3D printer's software, which converts it to a 3D printing layers file, which then prints it out.
So there's a finished one. There we go. 3D printed. That's really, really tough. You're not going to break that in a hurry. Um, I've done it with like a, a very high infill, so it's it's very very solid. You can 3D print with a, a you know less of an infill, less solid, um, but of course they do become quite weak. And uh, but that's good. That's going to be one of my covers there. I've nearly printed them all now. Um, so as you can see here, I've got these ones all connected up. So you can see here that's um, very clipped on nicely. Uh, they're not going to fall off. Got all that lot done there. There's the big one at the bottom. And then I'm still waiting for my copper connectors, but I have found some copper connectors again from Second Life EV Supplies. They've uh, they had the copper connectors and uh, they're on their way. Hopefully, maybe even arrive today. Um, here's all my spare ones, just kind of loitering around, waiting. How many have I got? Five, six, seven, eight. I think I just need a, a couple more printed, and uh, that'll be all the covers done. I've also moved the motor a bit closer. I uh, had some spare cable that I've now connected up here to the relays. Um, it's not all wired, obviously that end there is not connected, end over there is not connected. Um, at the moment all the relays just turn straight on, so I've got another 12 volt timer coming that will switch the pre-charge over between pre-charge and full negative, which will then uh, pre-charge the inverter that's in there. I'm hoping, once all this lot's connected up, that the BMS will start giving me some sensible answers. Um, but as you've, as you've seen before, the BMS does have a couple of components that are fried on it. All this now wired up means that um, once the batteries are done, I can obviously, as I say, test the BMS and then maybe even start working on the motor, which would be quite exciting. Um, and let's see if I can get that to spin. So keep you up to date and uh, catch up next week.